First opened in 2002. There's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Ford Field tunnels, and the noise level in this place just about off the charts. They are set for football as the Lions get ready to do battle with the New York Jets. Now a play fake here on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. McCann will try again on second down. Brought in by Walford, right side. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. McCown, and that is incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down, threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. One of these quarterbacks going to learn. You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. On fourth down, here's Lachlan Edwards to punt it. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. Now the Lions offense, they get ready to head back out there. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 15. Now the Notre Dame man, this is Theo Riddick. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Now here's the first carry for Amir Abdullah. Room here to run, and he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. 31 yards there and a first down. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to. But they didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Well played. Yeah, and it created a big run. On first down, Stafford here. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. On second and 10, Stafford. And that's incomplete. The tight end, Luke Wilson, was the target. And that'll make it third down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And he'll find Galladay, that's complete. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. 
So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 36. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. To throw on second down to Stafford. It's complete to Golden Tate. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 and a first down. Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this. And hey, you know, how you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't seem I, I to didn't want it. I didn't offer mine. You, know, you, were, you were the smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. His throw caught in about the five. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Back-to-back -back games of 17, and they are really on the march now. It's a first down. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. As I was going to ask you about that, field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. Only a yard on the completion. It's second and goal. Great footwork there, Charles, to dot the eye, stay in bounds, get both feet in. He's probably thinking, though, man, I made a catch like that that close to the end zone. I should have scored. Yeah, there's always a regret when you're that close to the goal line. But let's go back to what you talked about before, getting his feet down. Would you say dotting the eye? Mm -hmm. I can cross the T as well. That was excellent footwork to get in bounds and make a great catch. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Not only was that a terrific play, but that loss of yardage they created this close to their own goal line, that gives them a little breathing room now as they move them back. And they're breathing fire a little bit right now, aren't they? A lot of confidence being shown by them at this point of the game. Now Stafford on third and goal. And the Jets' defense making things difficult there. Fourth down. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss a one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. <laughs> he definitely wants that one back. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And the Lions are going to take a 3-0 lead. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up, no balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, you like Come that on, one? what does that mean, break out the, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out. Give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Now McCown, Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. McCown incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Now a run. This is Bilal Powell. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. 
Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Throwing his McCown on third down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Powell. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that <laughs> offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that <laughs> helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Amir Abdullah, the 30, 10, touchdown, Detroit. Amir Abdullah, 94 yards. And the Lions strike quickly here for six points. And with that carry, he's already over 100 yards here in the first half. And partner, you know exactly what he's saying to his teammates right now, right? Especially to the play caller. Give me the ball. Again, <laughs> and again, <laughs> and, again. <laughs> and again. It's not that heavy, sir. I'll take it. Prater for the extra point. And the lead grows to 10-0. Martin, the putter now, out to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. The Jets' offensive unit ready to get going here. They've had it twice. They've punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? On the ground, this is Isaiah Crowell, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 12. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. A first carry for Elijah McGuire. And he'll take this one only up to about the 21. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York.
And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. <laughs> That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Lions will take over. And Detroit getting set to go now. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Here's Stafford now on second down. And this is incomplete. He was trying to find Marvin Jones that time. And it's third down. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think it. you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. Hey, hey, hey. You got set. To throw on third down. Stafford. They're able to locate Wilson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Stafford to the former Seahawk Wilson for Alliance first. A pretty sizable deficit here in the first quarter. This defense will probably need to get off the field in those situations on third down. And you and I both know in this huddle before that last third down play, that's exactly what they talked about. Let's make a play. Let's get off the field. Let's reverse the momentum. Instead, they got hit with another first down, almost back to the drawing board. And that'll set them back five. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Out of the gun, Stafford. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete to the 40 and no further. The razzle-dazzle, though, got him a couple extra on the play. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. A second down run for Abdullah. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while, because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Now a first carry for LeGarrette Blunt. And he's going to get this inside the 30. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. They go play action here on first down. Oh, did he hang on to it? He did on the dive. Nice grab. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. When you're a player of his stature, you don't just circle the games on your team's calendar. 
circle, circle the, the Pro Bowl? <laughs> Without a doubt. That's a game that you just figure you're going to be in each and every year. That's because of catches like that. That's why he goes. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now it's Stafford. That is caught at the seven-yard line. No gain, and it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Here with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, as the Lions are in possession of the football here to begin quarter number two, and they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. On second down, here's Stafford. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. To throw is Stafford. This is caught, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. This will be taken in at the one. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And New York set to take the field. The results for them so far, not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? They begin with a run by Crowell. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. On second down, here's Crowell. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be third down. From the gun, it's McCown. And that's complete to Walford. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Here's McCown. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. As we inch closer to the regular season, I'm just peering down at some of the preseason records. Right now, Ravens 4-0, Bengals, Panthers, Cardinals, all 3-0. I guess my question is, what stock do you put in these preseason records? You know, the easy answer is nothing because <laughs> the preseason doesn't really matter. 
But some organizations do put more stock in it than others. Some of them want to win every preseason game. Others don't worry about that at all. Intel has told me that only one team has won the Super Bowl after going 0-4 in the preseason, and that was in a strike year, I believe, when Washington did it. So for the most part, you just don't want to go winless in the preseason. But remember this, the Browns and the Lions both went 4-0 preseasons, then they went 0-16 in the regular season. Speaking of winless teams, Eagles and Falcons both winless right now could be Super Bowl contenders. I still think that they're going to be, whether they go winless or not. Here's Wolford over the middle. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. McCown going to hand this one off to Powell. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. McCown to throw on second down. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. The Jets on third down. Two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Working from the gun, McCown. And this is going to be incomplete. Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. Now to try the Jets' field goal, Cairo Santos. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And that's off the right upright, and it bounces away no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41 first and 10. Here's Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Stafford hands to Abdullah. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. It's Steve McClendon that time who winds up getting him down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. On third down, Stafford throwing deep for Galladay. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And the Jets set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. 
And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Caught the tight end, Walford. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pick up on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. McCown throwing on second. And he's going to be grabbed and pulled down. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield, get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. The Jets on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and nine. Shotgun here for McCown. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and they just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. That's taken on the 25. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And Detroit getting set to go now. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. The left side completion to Jones. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. They lost four there, and it's third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Set. <laughs> To throw on third down. Stafford, he'll find a man over the middle. It's Galladay. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone, sometimes you're throwing it between the zone, sometimes the receiver's gonna just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Now a play fake here on first down. His throw incomplete. Golden Tate, his intended receiver. And it's second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. 
Back to the air. Stafford on second down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. To the air again, Stafford. And that's incomplete. A little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. This from 44 yards out, left hash. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that's going to make this a 16-0 ball game. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. McCown now on first down. Letting one go deep for a new one. And that's caught inside the 35. And they finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 34. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. Throwing on first is McCown. Looking sideline, incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse, And that'll bring up second down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit. But only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. McCown giving to Powell on the draw. And past the 30, down to about the 27. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. And that was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. to throw, it's McCown. Wolford's got it, complete. And now the Lions gonna stop us momentarily as they call a timeout. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Right hash mark, a 42-yard attempt. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good. 
And they'll at least get on the board here, still trailing, but 16 to three now. So they do get the three points before they hit halftime. Something to build on, maybe. Yeah, go ahead and raise the banner, right? The, wave the flag. That's good. Got points. And now, as you said, they've got something to build on as they get ready for the second half. And after the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. On oh, the return, Dwayne Washington. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. They've had a very solid first half, and as we near the end of that first half, they're just looking for a little more on top of their lead right now. And when you put together a game plan on offense, you put together what you think is going to be the best possible scenario, right? Hey, we're going to score. These are the plays that are going to do it. But you also put together your counters, meaning after they make adjustments to what you're doing, what do we have to go to? And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Jamal Adams. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. So after the INT, it's McCown now. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The loss of three on that first down pass play, now second and 13. On second down, here's McCown. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, You've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. On third and long, it's McCown. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. So here come the Lions now. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. And they begin the drive with Abula. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Again, it's Abdullah. They'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. Now the Jets are going to burn another timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half.
The Lions on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And Jones has it over the middle. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! On the return, it's Washington. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter at number three. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think like you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Single, single, set. To throw on second down is Stafford. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. The Lions on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and five. From the gun, here's Stafford. It's caught, Jones! And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Stafford to Jones, enough for a Lion first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you go lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Stafford gives to Abdullah. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So on the big tight end, hold it. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Four down, four down. 
following the penalty. Abdullah. And he's got this one just across midfield to the 49. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Jets offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. They'll run again. Again, it's Powell. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. The tackle there by Quandry Diggs. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing his McCann on third down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is scooped up by the Lions. And the field position doesn't get much better than this. They'll have it first and goal at the eight-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it, I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. They'll give it to him up the middle. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Partner, has been my experience that after two stops like that near the goal line, defense has only become bolder. They don't back off at all. I think they continue to bring pressure and force them to make a really big play against them. Had the incompletion, then the run for no gain. Let's see now. Now Stafford on third and goal. He loses five full yards to bring up four. So out comes the field goal team once more. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that will swell the lead to 16. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Good word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. McCown will try again on second down. He hits Jermaine Kurz. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. They go play action here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. This is the running back power. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Partner, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Snap comes at one. McCown. That one's complete to Tomlinson. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. They'll get just a couple, but the sticks move again. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So that'll back him up five. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. They go again with Powell. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Third and one, McCown wants to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They'll get just a couple, but the sticks move again. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. 
third and short. Blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. McCown now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. McCown now on first down. Over the middle complete. That's Powell. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Call it a gain of three. And that'll make this a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. McCown to throw on second down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Quincy Anunwa that time, and it's third down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. McCown looks to throw again. And that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Now to try the Jets' field goal, Cairo Santos. From the left hash, this from 37. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. After the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. On the return, it's Washington. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah. Run what Put you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns five yards on the catch there brings up second down he decided to run a hitch route it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose and boy he rifled one in there on that one not much run after catch but it worked really well second and five after the five yard completion on first down here's Stafford now on second down He's going to sling this deep downfield. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. The Lions on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and five. Out of the gun, Stafford. Gonna look deep for Wilson. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Detroit. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. 
And New York set to take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They run with power. Oh, and he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt, and if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Now a first down throw, Stafford. The left side completion to Jones. And he is gonna lose yardage here. That's gonna go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. <laughs> On second down, here's Stafford. And incomplete on the deep ball. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. We're rolling, we're rolling. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Third and long, it's Stafford. It's brought in left side by Tate. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. And New York set to take the field, and last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. They start the drive with a give to Powell. And a nice pickup as this one gets them to the 10-yard line. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. McCown throwing on second. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. 
Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. On first and ten, here's McCown. He's going to look deep down the... Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Big yardage that time for the Jets. 44 yards. That's a big time pitch and catch right there. And partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one-on-one -on -one and the ball's in the air like that. McCown now on first down. The grab made by Curse over the middle. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Here's Powell, and he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. The linebacker, Christian Jones, there to make the stop. We you know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On second down, here's McCown. And his throw is incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Jets on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and seven. Shotgun here for McCown. Got an open man. It's a million one. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points, able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. After the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. On the return, it's Washington. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Lions offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. On first down, it's Stafford. Caught on the right side by Jones. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against the Wingers, and they just, ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. <laughs> On first down, Abdullah. And an alley to run. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. 
from the 50 at Stanford. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked off by Morris Claiborne. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you think maybe you're just sitting on and trying to drop. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Glover Quinn. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. He couldn't hook up with a noon while that time. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt and in a big way. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Sometime in this fourth quarter, someone on defense is going to have to step up and force a turnover. They'll run again. This time it's a duel. And now where are they going to mark him here? Well, they say he did get back to the one-yard line, but that could have easily been two points the other way. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments, and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. And he's able to get it out of there. And this is a pretty good kick. Take it at the 37. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Jets will take over first and 10. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And he's going to get it across the midfield stripe into Lion territory. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Working from the gun, McCown throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. From the gun on third, McCown. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Now McCown got to have this one. And that's complete to Walford. Pass the 20. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Clive Walford, 46 yards. And the Jets have made this a one-score game. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down and, oh, okay, forget the field goal because that looked like an easy three points. 
Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Santos out now. He'll kick it away. On the return, it's Washington. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Stafford on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Set, 180. On second and 10, Stafford. Looking downfield for Jones. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A big play there for Detroit. And even 50 yards. We just saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because usually you have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. Man, he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. On third down, Abdullah. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This will be a 37-yard attempt. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that'll push the lead up to eight. So yet another field goal to end the drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. This is taken at the three. He spins free. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Throwing on first is McCown. He's got his man. It's Curse. 
And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. First play of the drive in their hip pocket. Of course, the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion. Field goals aren't going to help you. Yeah, but how about that first play of the drive? Just to get them started, nice gain, got some positive momentum going. They're on their way, and they don't have to rush. From the gun, it's McCown. Complete out right to Kurz. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. On first down, McCown. And this is caught by Curse. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Again, they'll throw with McCown. And incomplete. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Figuring they're going for it on fourth down. Remember, though, they do have all three timeouts, so even if they don't get it, all is not lost. Yeah, normally in this situation, when you talk about having to go for it, everything is in this play. But as you noted, with those three timeouts, they actually have a little bit of a safety net. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. Back to throw. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Quadre Diggs. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. On fourth down, that turned out like a punt. Maybe he was better defensively there just to knock it down. And you know they go over those situations. All right, fourth down, where's the ball? Where would we get the ball? But instinct takes over, and when it's in the air, they just go and get it. So it's hard to get on him for intercepting it, but the smart play would have been what you suggested. Knock it down and take over in a deeper position. They go with Abdullah again. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Now Stafford. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he showed some fancy footwork on the juke, but then quickly taken down.
Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Jets' offense gets ready to head back on the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. A good pick up there of 20 yards. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Devon Kennard in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. He'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. He was trying for his running back, Bilal Powell, and it's third down. So he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. He's back to throw, and nearly intercepted there. That would have been ball game if he had clinched it and caught it. Instead, it gives him one more chance here on fourth down. Nearly an interception. If that one's picked off, it's over. So a new lease on life, so to speak. A lot of times when you're in coverage, you're so focused on the man and the coverage that sometimes the ball, if it arrives, it surprises you. That may have happened to him in that situation. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Lions looking like they're going to come away with a victory. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. And, Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gordon. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Lions.